Okay, I'm, I'm Zane Holmes, uh, 2004 Australian Ironman champion. Okay, well the board is a, is a bit different to the ski in the sense that it is a very, more of a personal thing. It's, it's shaped to your body weight and size and, uh, and preference. Um, so with things like the, the thickness of the board and uh, also the width, uh, that corresponds to how heavy you are and I guess uh, how big you are, whether you've got wide shoulders and, uh, and stuff like that. Um, also the, the knee wells, um, on my board here I, I do have some nice deep knee wells. I find that um, very important because it, you get down in the board a lot more and uh, it makes it more stable because you, your centre of gra gravity is lower. Uh, with the, the knee pads here, um, they're obviously used to kneel on and you put, I, I tend to put the wax either in the front and back of the knee pads. The knee pads themselves do provide some grip when you're laying down and kneeling up, um, but you need wax at the back uh, if you need to, to move back on your board, uh, going out to pop over a wave or to coming in um, on a wave, you don't, so you don't nose dive, you need wax back here so you can move back and not slip off. And the wax up here, I use it um, mainly just for laying down. Um, if you've got to you know, pop up over a wave uh, laying down, and uh, you know, you're not going to slide all over the place when you lay back down. Um, with this, this carry handle here, it's very, very uh, useful for, for a fast finish. Uh, if you've got a, a sprint finish in a race, you don't have to reach right up here. Um, you've got a chance then of missing the handle uh, because you really can't hang on to that while you're still kneeling. Um, so this one, uh, I can still hang on to that as I'm kneeling down. So before you even get off and, um, and running, you can have your hand on that and it's, it's much easier and um, makes it very fast finish for you. Um, with, the, with the carry handles, um, with this finish handle here, that's, um, I guess, determine, the side you put that on determines whether you're left or right handed. Um, myself, I'm left handed. I use, I pick that up in my left hand, so it's got to be on the right hand side of the board over here. And obviously the opposite if you, if you carry the, with your right hand. Uh, with, this, with this carry handle here in the, in the rail of the board, uh, I use it just for carrying the board around, um, but um, a lot of people use these for starting and uh, you can either lock your thumb into it like that so you've got more grip or some of the smaller people can use it as an actual hand grip as well. Personally I, I actually put my whole hand around the board, uh, my fingers underneath past that groove, um, but as I say if, it, if you're smaller uh, and you feel that it gives you better grip then uh, by all means that's the way to go. Okay so I usually wax the board right back to um, you know as far as you can down here. Um, this section, having this section waxed is always important when you're moving back on the board even if you're on your knees you've got something to grip onto. Um, going out, popping over waves, you're sitting back on this section here so you don't want to be slipping off and having trouble gripping with your legs. Um, so wax Wax is important here, up the front of the board. Um, in in big conditions, when you happen to lay down, either going out through the surf um, or coming in, it's always good to get a bit of grip on your, with your chest here, um, and maintain control of the board, so that's always important. I mean, when you're sort of paddling aggressively, it's easy to slide all over the board, um, and you want to maintain sort of secure contact with the board so that you can get the most out of your stroke. Now let's have a look at how a board is manufactured at the Dolphin Factory. Hayden Lewis is going to show us around. We make a, a two different boards, one for a guy and one for a girl, okay, because we're all different shapes and sizes and all that sort of thing. You've got to get that balance between, um, I suppose, flotation, okay, whilst it not being too big, and you know, when waves are coming through, you're getting popped. It's all, it's all about different shapes, different, different sizes, and, and the weight factor, you know, so for the girls, for them to be able to pop over the waves and sink the tail of the board and all that sort of thing, um, we've just found through our, 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 I suppose, experience that by taking that little bit of volume out of the tail, you know, they're, they're able to pop those waves a lot easier, and, you know, and that means they're getting out faster. Not, not just the, the case of it's important getting the right volume for the right weight of, of, of the, the competitor, 
but also with the surf life saving specifications, the board has to be a minimum weight of 7.6 7.6 kilos. Yeah, we have no boards uh, in the shop or, or in the factory that aren't custom made. Okay, so it's all about balancing that that skill level with the board size and uh, and the shape of the board. All, all the boards come up here. All the foam, the performance racing board foams, the Cool Light foam, so it's extremely light. Um, but with that lightness, also comes, I suppose, a durability issue. Basically starts its life on a racing board, it just comes in as a blank block of foam. Once the, um, once the boards come in, they're put, in a, put into a profile, which gives the basic rocker of the board and the basic volume of the boards cut out. You've got a, you've got a basic rocker of the board, okay, and you've got the well, and you've got the basic volume. Uh, from there you can see that the structure of the board, all the rails and all of that are, are drawn out. All the boards, they're all hand shaped. Okay, so we don't use any machine, um, machine um, shaping at all because at the end of the day, I think you, you're going to end up with, by, by continually hand shaping a board, you, you get to keep the feel of the board. And this is our laminating room. As you can see with the boards, the, the base coal of the boards actually put in as a pigment into, into the epoxy resin. Okay. Once the board's been laminated, okay, and with the with the epoxy glass, okay, it's then thinned and filled. This is when the board gets sanded again, and then that's when the board comes back to this level here, which is ready for the artwork to be completed. This is for the twisted brothers, twisted little kids out there. <laughs> so what we suggest is put your board in in a bag like this. Well, then obviously the the, the life of the board is going to be extended considerably. Yeah. Let's go for warm up, five minute dog. Okay, you guys, um, just before we get going, we'll do a couple of stretches. Uh, just um, a little bit like swimming, just getting the arms going over, so just a bit of rotation with your shoulders. Loosen your shoulders up, very important. Probably spend, you know, two or three minutes doing this and then um, we'll get into some other stretches. Okay, just uh, loosen up your triceps a bit. Just pull them down, nice tight stretch. Try and hold it for about, you know, 20 seconds. If you can, just as you're stretching, try and just pull it a bit more as you go through the stretch. Okay, all right, cross over. Triceps get really sore on a board, so it's really important to stretch them. Um, same with your shoulders, just pull your shoulder across, loosen up your shoulders a bit. Okay. Alright. Good 20 seconds there. Okay, really important on a board, I think one of the most important stretches for a board is not so much your upper body but your lower body. If you paddle a board properly, you should really use your legs and use them a lot. So a stretch that I like to do before I do a board race is just lay on my back on the beach. This is right before we start the board race and just pull your, pull your arm. Uh, you're just stretching your glutes really, so just put your arm yeah, on that and then just pull it back nice and tight to feel the stretch right here. Okay, you've got to do that on both sides. Again, holding it for about 20 seconds. Okay, cross over. Pull it back, pull your knee back into your chest. Really stretching your glute. If you paddle the board properly, that'll be the first place to blow up is your glutes. Okay, and then probably just as important is just sort of stretching your hamstrings as well. Okay, so just, you know, you can do this in a number of ways, but just a basic hamstring stretch. Just really try and loosen up the hamstrings. Keep them nice and loose. It's so important when you're doing a board race to have your legs loose. Everyone works on their arms, but your legs are what blows you up. Especially when it comes to the finish, if you jump off a board and your legs are too tight, you can't sprint up the beach. Okay, and then the other one we'll do is just on our um, lower backs, just having a bit of a twist. So this one's also very important, just I want you to get your knee and just pull it across, keep your boat, try to keep your shoulder, your opposite shoulder on the ground. Pull your knee across and try and stretch your lower backs. Okay, and also your glute. Last one, just 
lower backs again. Just the twisting one, okay? Opposite elbow to opposite knee and just pull yourself across and just twist your lower backs. This one's also really good for ski paddling as well. Try to always do these stretches before you go for a warm up just to loosen your body up. Do your warm up, come in from your warm up and then maybe do these stretches again so you've done two sets of them and then you should be ready to race. Always bearing in mind in your warm up you've got to do a little bit of hard stuff as well. A warm up should not always just be easy, it's, you should be using all your gears in the warm up. Okay. Okay, let's go for a quick paddle and um, come back and we'll start the starts. Now that we've found a board that suits you, let's go and learn how to paddle it. Let's look at body position. When paddling on your knees, trim is very important. The athlete has to be in a position on the board so it planes. This is indicated by a bell wave under the nose. This position will change depending on conditions. For example, when paddling out through the surf, you may need to sit a little further back. And when coming home, you may need to sit a little further forward. The catch or entry. The paddler needs to reach as far forward as possible without overbalancing. The paddler should drive his arms deep into the water, accelerating through the stroke with a nice clean exit. Don't bob up and down too much. You can see here, my knee angle stays constant throughout the stroke. From the front, you can see I reach forward. My chest drives my arms deep into the water with a nice clean exit at the back, nice high elbows, and bringing my hands forward close to the rail of the board. Here you can see the correct recovery is lifting your elbows out nice and high at the back without picking up too much water. Running your hands up the rails of the board. Higher elbows aid in recovery and avoid fatigue. Once again here we can see my board is trimming nicely along the top of the water. There's a slight bell wave just coming off the nose. The board is carrying a lot of speed. Another form of paddling is laying down. This is very useful, especially when your legs are fatigued, as you may need to rest. You may also have to lay down after rolling under a wave before you get back into the kneeling position. Lying down, just like in the kneeling position, the trim of the board is very important. The board is flat on the water with a slight wave coming from under the nose. So those are the key fundamentals for a correct board paddling stroke. So get out there and practice. Okay, it's really important when you paddle a board to use different gears, okay? I like to call them gears, a little bit like a car. First is easy and fifth is hard, okay? So that's what we're gonna be doing today, going through gears one to five and really looking at increasing your intensity each time we change gear, okay? It's really important to learn how to do that in the race. Be able to go up with the pace or down with the pace. First gear is an easy or recovery rate, 60% effort. You should be doing 130 beats per minute heart rate or less. Second gear is a steady or solid rate, 70% effort. Somewhere between 140 and 160 beats per minute heart rate. Third gear is a hard rate. 80% effort, somewhere around 160, 180 beats per minute heart rate. Fourth gear is very hard, 90% effort, somewhere around 180 to 200 beats per minute heart rate. Fifth gear is race pace, 100% effort, 200 beats per minute heart rate or above, whatever you are capable of. Basically, as hard as you can go.
There are two different types of starts. First you've got a hip start and secondly you've got a drag start. A hip start is a faster start and most experienced paddlers will use this. The hip start allows you to take all your running speed and convert it into paddling speed. So before doing starts it's very important to go down and check the water. If you don't know what you're running into you may fall into a hole. We're also checking for uneven surfaces that you may twist your ankle on or even rocks and shelves. Really big drop off okay if you watch this it goes from being shallow to deep by um, do a carry start running and you're gonna have to jump from here straight onto your board and just go okay. The most important thing is holding the board correctly. When we do a start, I tend to try and hold my board right on my hip, so just um, on, my, on my fat roll there, just try to sort of get the board, pull it into your hip nice and tight so it's sitting really nice and snug. Don't hold your board loose, because if you hold it loose as you run down the beach, you could drop it. Okay, if it gets windy, on a really windy day, I tend to hold this handle as well, okay, so I might run in like that, so I'm holding my board really stable. It's really important if you haven't got one on a board to always try and get a hand grip, okay, so you can get your hand in. A lot of smaller people find it quite hard if they haven't got a hand grip to actually wrap their arm right around their board. Okay, the other thing, making sure if you're a left-handed person, you're not using a right-handed board. You've always got to make sure the grip that you've got is in the right side. Having a secure grip of your board on your hip allows you to run at maximum speed. To get a good start, you must have a good footing. I like to dig a couple of small holes in the sand that I can put my feet into and drive off to get maximum speed. Also really important is always be aware of what the start is doing. If you see the gun go up, you get ready to go, okay? If you see a wave coming, or there's something that happens on the beach around you, put your hand up straight away. If you put your hand up, and the rules it says the starter can't start the race. Although be aware I have been in races where the starter has started it. So always be aware of what the starter's about to do. Listen for the gun so you get really ready to go. Use your legs and really drive off the start. Okay, really important to get good lift right from the, from the gun. Okay, you guys for the first couple of starts, okay, I don't want you to go 100%. I want you to just run in pretty solid and jump on your board and really just try and do it perfectly rather than with much speed, okay? Ready, go! When doing a start, it is crucial to turn good running speed into paddling speed. To mount the board, try and make this transition as smooth as possible to carry maximum speed into your paddling. When placing the board down, never lose contact of the board. Once the gun goes, explode off the line and accelerate into the water. Any gain you get off the start, you should carry into the water. Here we can see that speed getting converted into good use, gliding the board across the water. Once you're on the line in the starter's hands, focus your attention on the water. Don't get distracted at the start. A start can really win or lose your race. Okay? If you don't get on your board fast and, and, and be in that top half a dozen people, you're really leaving yourself exposed to having a bad race. So the key to a good start is having a firm grip on the board, an explosive launch off the line, carrying that speed into a nice clean mount onto your board. Drag starts are useful in windy conditions or when there is a long bank that you have to wade over. You should always do a drag start in windy conditions if you're an inexperienced paddler. There's another thing about starts is always checking what's on the beach, you know, like, like today there's a lot of really quite sharp shells, so it's always a good thing once you get your board on the start line just to walk down and maybe clear out any shells that are in front of you so you don't land on them on the way out or else you're going to cut your foot and uh, it doesn't make the race too pleasant. So the key to a good start is having a firm grip on the board, running down the beach, wading out cleanly, getting your legs up nice and high, using your arms. When you get out into a little bit of deeper water around about knee depth, 
you put the board down and you start bounding, keeping the board nice and straight underneath you. Here you can see, when I get to knee depth, I put my board down and start bounding, keeping both hands on the board. To mount the board after bounding, try and make this transition as smooth as possible to carry maximum speed into your paddling. You can see here that I use the moment to jump onto my board for popping over a wave. This is something you can practice as you get better on your board. Okay, let's look at popping waves. This is a skill that can definitely win you races. If you can get through the wave zone first, you're in a good position to win the race. It's important to carry plenty of speed when approaching the whitewater. The more momentum you have will help you punch through or punch over the wave. When popping a wave, timing is everything. It's crucial to transfer your weight back before the whitewater hits. Here we can see as the paddler approaches the wave, he transfers his weight to the back of the board, lifting the nose up and over the whitewater. Once the board is up onto the whitewater, take an aggressive stroke, transferring your weight forward. This will get your board back into the trim position and up to speed quickly. It is important to get up to maximum speed before the next oncoming wave. Here is a technique I use to get over waves that are too big to pop on my knees. As the wave approaches, I sit back on my board, putting my legs over the side, lifting the nose up out of the water. As the wave rolls under my board, I dive forward on my stomach to push the board up and over the top, grabbing a front handle for security. If a wave is too big to pop over, you're going to need to roll it. Let's have a look at rolling with Glenn Anderson. Today we're going to learn the technique used when we go out into the surf and the waves are too big to pop. When this happens, we've got to roll our boards. To begin with, we can practice this technique in flat water. Now I'm paddling out through the surf, there's a wave coming and I've decided that it's too big for me to pop over. When this happens, we've got to roll our board underneath it. Now I've decided to roll, it's important to be aggressive through the whole rolling manoeuvre. In the first stage of rolling, timing is critical. I must grab my front handles, roll my board upside down before the white water hits me. I've aggressively rolled off my board. My body is deep vertical, acting as a sea anchor so I don't get dragged backwards. My arms are braced and ready to pull the nose of the board under the white water. Once the wave has passed, it's crucial I get back on my board and moving as fast as possible. To get back on the board, we roll it over using the front handles and slide back on as fast as possible. Now that you're out through the break, you're into the hard part of the race. Any advantage is a good advantage, so let's have a look at wash riding. Okay, wash riding, okay, wash riding is probably one of the most important things about board racing. Sometimes you get people that are really fast off the beach, and if they are, you've got to use them and sit on their wash, try and get them to get you out to the boys, and then you can attack them on the way back. So, wash riding is probably one of the most important things, I believe. In a race. Okay, there's two ways you can wash ride. You can sit on the side of somebody's board or you can sit on the tail of somebody's board. I prefer to sit on the side because you're more 
you're able to respond faster if the pace picks up in the race, you're right there. Whereas if you're on the back, sometimes you can lose the feel of the race. So we're going to practice a bit of that now, so let's get into it. Here you can see, when you're on the side wash, the best position to sit is with the nose of your board right on the other paddler's elbow. Try not to let the nose of your board interfere with the other person's stroke. The optimum place to be on somebody's rear wash is about one metre behind their tail. When you're out training, always practice wash riding, either on the sides of the boards or behind the boards. Practicing riding on the wash will get you familiar with the way your board responds while on that wash. Here we can see in a race situation competitors using the wash to help conserve energy. This energy can be used to have a good strong finish at the end of the race. Making a good sharp boy turn quickly and accelerating away can help you make a break on the rest of the field. Boy turns should be a part of a race that you can make an attack, not lay down and have a rest. Doing a boy turn on your knees is faster, ensuring that you can accelerate back up to speed. To perform a boy turn quickly, as you paddle into the boy, transfer your weight to the back, lifting the nose out of the water and sweeping the nose around. You should only do one sweep stroke with the inside arm to swing the nose of the board around and then you should get back into paddling. Getting a good turn on the last boy will set you up for a good run home. Coming into the boy turn, I want to get my weight back on the board, swing the board round with a sweeping motion, jump forward and off again. So when I'm coming up to do a boy turn, I'm going to shift my weight back on the board, swing the board round with a sweeping motion, bring my weight back forward and off. I'm approaching the last point now. Once again, I'm going to shift my weight back on the board, swing around the can, get my position back into that trim position, and then drive off onto the runners. The fastest way home is on a wave, so let's look at catching waves. The key ingredient to catching a wave is good board speed, so working the runners will help you maximise that speed and ensure that you have the first opportunity of catching the first wave available. Here we can see the paddler has good board speed and the board is well trimmed, allowing him to catch the wave. It is important to catch the wave early when it is still green. This will give you plenty of time to lay down and prepare for when the wave breaks. When you come down the front of the wave, you want to trim back, ensuring you do not nosedive. Before the wave breaks and the whitewash hits, you must lie down at the back of the board and hold on to the back straps to ensure you do not get knocked off your board by the white water. Once the impact of the wave is settled, you can get back up onto your knees and look for the best line back to the beach. Now you need to sight the finish and get yourself into the best possible position for the run up the beach. On a finish, timing is also very important. You need to know exactly where you're going to jump off. You need to jump off about the position where you jump on on the way out. Getting off in the right position will ensure that you have a good finish and a good run to the line. Okay you guys, it's really important on a finish that you actually look for the bottom and get off in time. 
both of you two then, you both stayed on the board too long and you were sort of on the way when it was probably only about like half a metre of depth. So try to time it so you actually get off the board and start bounding and then pick the board up and run. Just like a start, you would do the finish the same. So as far out as you run on the start, that should be where you actually start to bound on the finish as well. So just look for that. One of the reasons we get off and start bounding early instead of staying on the wave if it's, not, if, it's, if it's deep enough is because you can run and bound a lot faster than what a wave moves. A wave is only going very slow as opposed to what you can run at. So it's very important to get off and bound and then run and out, out sprint the wave. One thing that you should do before every race you do is walk out and check what the depth of the water is, especially in a race like today when it would be a, a long wade. So you know when to get off on the way home and I know you're tired You've just done a hard race and all you want to do is stay on your board, but to win that race you just have to get off and run. A good finish can either win or lose you the race. It's really important when you get off your board to look for your handle. If you miss your handle, you're going to have a very, very bad finish. Okay, going from bounding, okay, when you come in and you bounded your board, really important to make sure that the board's going dead straight. If your board's going a little bit crooked and you jump off and leave it, it'll go to the side, okay? So when I'm bounding, I try to bound, make the board go dead straight, and with this hand I come through and just grab my finish hand and start running. Okay, so you can definitely win and lose a race by uh, missing your handle, so always make sure you get that handle first pop. When you jump off the board, sight your handle and grab onto it. Run your hand up the board and into the groove of the handle. This will ensure you get it first time every time. Knowing the exact moment to jump off your board and attack your opposition is all about timing. So make sure you get out there and practice your finishes.